gluing yourself to a freeway, gluing yourself to a painting, throwing soup at a painting, starting a riot. This is what protests look like these days, and it looks stupid even when it's dangerous. It's not a good sign when all your protest actions just look like stunts from jackass. I'm Steve-O, and this is Fart Darts. For climate change. But G.K. Chesterton saw a version of this a hundred years ago, and thank God he wrote about it in an essay called The Modern Martyr. He talked about a group of feminists who chained themselves to the railings of Downing Street. He said it provided a good, ironical allegory of most modern martyrdom. It generally consists of a man chaining himself up and then complaining that he is not free, or a woman camping in the quad and then complaining that she doesn't have food. This is like basic humanitarian aid we're asking for. Right, sorry, basic humanitarian aid. This is different from the kind of protest that involves doing something normal despite pushback. Outdoor psalm sings during COVID, walking into the grocery store without a surgical mask, standing in front of an American flag. These were people doing normal stuff and getting in trouble. But there's a certain kind of protest that doesn't just want to get on with normal life, but wants to be seen as a martyr for being obnoxious. Modern people think that anyone who makes himself slightly uncomfortable in public will immediately be uproariously popular. At bottom, this is about fame. They want the fame of the martyr, but they don't want to die. And even when they do want to die, they're forgotten. As the Prudentialist said, everyone wants to be the next major photo of history, like it's still the 20th century, while people will self-immolate and be largely forgotten by the 2024 zeitgeist in two weeks. Yes, there's a problem of mass media and short attention spans, but also these people are doing this to themselves. The guy who burned himself alive for Palestine didn't have this foisted upon him. It was just another performance. These are people who don't know the difference between an execution and a color run. Hey! Being burned at the stake with a smile on your face is brave. Offing yourself on camera is just extreme theater. Pretty soon we're going to have a guy throwing himself in a tiger cage while singing Oklahoma. For George Floyd, of course. Chesterton knows that it's good to fight for what we believe. All ordinary intellectual opinions are worth a bit of a row. But many of these people aren't there because they strongly believe in something. I really don't know. I'm pretty sure they're... Do you know what NYU is doing? about Israel. Why are we protesting? Even the ones who do believe sincerely in it aren't accomplishing anything. And you don't have to be a genius like Chesterton to understand that. I don't believe uh, living in a pup tent uh, for uh, Hamas is really helpful. Plus, as Chesterton saw, everything they do for their cause are things a drunk would do for fun. Drunkards would interrupt meetings and take the consequences. Drunks break windows. Drunks can sit in traffic. But if they say it's for some cause, it becomes suddenly noble. Today I'm going to treat myself to some wasabi snooters. For Gaza. They think they're proving their sincerity, but they're not. If I were really martyred for an opinion, it would certainly only be for one or two of my most central and sacred opinions. But as for kicking up the particular kind of shindy that the suffragettes are kicking up, I would as soon do it for my shallowest opinion as for my deepest one. I'll do anything for Palestine as long as everyone respects my banana allergy. Chesterton again. While it is a demonstration that probably is adopted from the most fanatical motives, it is a demonstration which might be adopted from the most frivolous. So if all this is true, why does Chesterton Chesterton think that the Christian martyrs did anything worthwhile. Well, for one, the martyrs didn't have much of a choice. Of course, they had a choice about what they did, but they didn't have a choice about what the persecutors did about it. Their deaths really did have power, but it wasn't about showing their sincerity. Pagans were not impressed by the torture of Christians merely because it showed that they honestly held their opinion. They knew that millions of people honestly held all sorts of opinions. The point of such extreme martyrdom is much more subtle. It is that it gives an appearance of a man having something quite specially strong to back him up, of his drawing upon some power. And this can only be proved when all his physical contentment is destroyed, when all the current of his bodily being is reversed and turned to pain. If a man is seen to be roaring with laughter all the time that he is skinned alive, it would not be unreasonable to deduce that somewhere in the recesses of his mind he had thought of a rather good joke. Similarly, if men smiled and sang, as they did, while they were being boiled or torn in pieces, the spectators felt the presence of something more than mere mental honesty. They felt the presence of some new and unintelligible kind of pleasure, which presumably came from somewhere. The pagan said to himself, if Christianity makes a man happy while his legs are being eaten by a lion, might it not make me happy while my legs are still attached to me and walking down the street? Obviously, martyrdom isn't the only kind of faithful action, but the modern martyrs are trying to get the same effect by just being annoying or destructive. The protests are absurd, but the punishment isn't harsh enough to overshadow the absurdity. St. Peter was crucified upside down as a huge inhuman joke, but his human seriousness survived the inhuman 
human joke because in whatever posture, he had died for his faith. The modern martyr of the Pankhurst type courts the absurdity without making the suffering strong enough to eclipse the absurdity. She is like a St. Peter who should deliberately stand on his head for 10 seconds and then expect to be canonized for it. I'm not talking about whether protests influence power. I'm not even talking about the particular issues involved in these protests. I'm talking about what these people are doing as opposed to what they think they're doing. They think they're doing this when what they're actually doing is this. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville and this is the Anaconda Ball Pit. For trans rights.